Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 10 of Bobble Pod. Um, in this episode, I'm rejoined by Rashpal Singh Sagu. Thank you for joining us again, Rashpal. Thanks for having us again. Uh, this episode, we're going to be covering the importance of video. Our last episode, we looked at the future outlook on video. And in that podcast, we discussed a number of things. Um, and this podcast, we're going to talk about the importance of video and what it means to you if you're a business or an individual trying to promote yourself. But before I quickly continue, as always, you are listening on podcast streaming platforms. Please subscribe and follow us. Give your feedback, comment, like. And if you're on YouTube, hello YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button so you get notifications on when all our video content comes out. So straight into it, Rush Palm. So why is video important as a creative tool for businesses? Video is such a strong medium compared to every other channel. Um, I mentioned it in the previous podcast, but it's about connecting sound and vision together. So as a medium, and if you can tie in storytelling um, into it, it just becomes magnetic. People watch something. How many times have you watched a video and, and suddenly you got sucked into it more and more and more and you think, wow, where's the time gone? So from that perspective... <laughs> TikTok, I'll tell you, TikTok and Facebook videos, unbelievable. Yeah, so from that perspective, you know, video is super sticky um, that's why it's valuable, not only on social engines, but it's super valuable on your website as well. Get people onto the website. This might be great with you, but I'm kind of against embedding YouTube video onto a website. Um, we use different technology. Um, and, and from that point of view, okay, you can okay. see... Whoa, no, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. We, can have a, we can have a general conversation about this. Okay, from an SEO expert to a video expert. Okay, so generally, yes, we would prefer businesses to embed... Um, not host a video on the website, but I'd rather to embed it just because of the load Absolutely. time takes Absolutely. it away. Because when you consider Google's update from around Cold War Battles that came out in July 2021, um, we saw that embedded videos on a website did better in terms of speed, load time against Always. those that were hosted. But you say you have a different way to do it. So please do share. Well, first, let me tell you about the problems. So absolutely don't host a video on your website, embed it, absolutely for speed, for, for loading times. But you've just invested in the SEO, PPC, or social media marketing to drive traffic to your website. So all of them, pennies, pounds, and tens of pounds, hundreds of pounds, thousands of pounds, you've, you've just paid to get traffic to the website, and you've got a YouTube embed there. All they've got to do is click that one YouTube logo or the title, and all of that money has been slightly compromised because now they're on YouTube. And YouTube's goal is to keep you on YouTube. So you watch a video and you see another likewise video or you get distracted and you look down the side panel and you see other videos that might be more interesting. And if we flip back, let's say you didn't click the, uh, the YouTube logo or the title. You get to the end of the video, you get a beautiful mosaic of other videos that might not be related to the business or service that you're looking at on that website. So from that point of view, it's like having a leak at the bottom of your bucket. <clears throat> we use a technology called Wistia. Wistia are just like uh, YouTube or Vimeo. Vimeo and YouTube are, are probably the most popular brands that people recognize. Um, Wistia as a technology company do exactly the same. They're a video hosting uh, platform and we put video on there and put an embed onto the website. If we go through all the technicalities, it's even faster than YouTube with regards to upload speeds. It supports SEO and all of that jazz. But most importantly, the point that we're talking around is you've got traffic to the website. There is no button to click on where they can leak out. So you're in control of that user experience. So you want to bring traffic to your website, feed them with video because that's sticky, keeps them on longer, watch time, and you, you, you general dwell time on the website is then where you want it to be as long yeah. as possible as long as possible. And then from that point of view, you can put call to actions in that video. You want them to go to a different page. You want them to sign up to a newsletter. You can put a turnstile directly in the back of that video. So you don't have to put a form next to the video or under the video. But they're like bonuses or nice to haves. The key point I'm trying to drive here is they're not leaking out of your digital footprint. Yeah, that, that's key. And I agree with that. Some, some of our clients do, do YouTube, some we embed directly on. Um, because it's better um, instead of hosting onto it. Um, and you can use platforms like Vimeo, which are like, you know, you know, private videos, so there's no link to anything else in, in that element. So, yeah, I totally agree with that. I would never host a video on a website because it just slows it down way too much. So specifically, if it's on your homepage and it's like that gallery image and it's the first, as we call the first contentful paint, FCP, 
as we call it from a call with vials point of view is you know the first piece of you know um content they see or it's the lcp it's the largest contentful pain on your website the lcp which is how long to take for the largest piece of content and the largest piece of content always tends to be the biggest gallery image or the video on the site that takes too long to load which is what fails most websites call with vitals so no it's really really important for that but if I'm a business out there, Rashpal, and I'm just about to get into video, and I'd be surprised if you're just about to get into video and not already tested into it, um, what tools are there out there in my arsenal? Because you're a video agency, you know, you offer professional services, you will come at a price point, but there's a lot of businesses out there, micro, small businesses that can't really, uh, come, it comes down to affordability, essentially. What can they do to get into video? So great question. Um, so, so in our agency, when we when we speak to a new prospect, the first question is really to understand, you know, how big they are, what's their affordability, like you said, and depending on on where they are, we have three options. We have a freemium service where we can point them in the right direction for really what they need, spend some time with them. Obviously, we can't invest too much time on them with them, but we have lots of free resources. Ask the question. We've got some free resources. We'll share them with you. Go away and, and you know, just get on with it. Get busy with it. Obviously, beyond the freemium, we, we've got our project campaign service. We've got our partner service as well. And, and obviously, they come, uh, um, depending on the needs of the business, the, then them two services plug in. Coming back to the freemium, I think there's lots of options out there. Um, but once again, I would we always start with strategy. What is the goal? Why do you want to produce video? Is it, once again, marketing? Is it awareness? Is it sales? Is it conversion? Have I got a big sales team? And we've got lots of telesales happening. We've got people who are constantly speaking to customers, but we can't get them over the line. Well, maybe you need a sales enablement kind of video to get people over the line. Produce some testimonials, produce some product reviews. So, you know, the customers, they understand the awareness part. You don't want to take them back up the journey. You want to take them forwards in the journey. So really it's about, you know, firstly, where are you in your journey with your customers? Where, where's the bottlenecks? Where, where are the problems? And then, and then once you've identified what the problems are, make them videos, you know, using your, your phones, yourself, whether it's a, a screen recording. Um, and then there's tools, once again, free tools like Descript um, is, a, is a great tool where you can just upload your video to Descript. You can actually edit the video. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's super cool. You can, oh. you, know, you can edit the video like a word processor. So you're not editing like an editor would edit on a timeline. You're actually looking through the words and saying, okay, take that word out, take that word out, just like Google Docs or, or a word processor. Does not, edit not make... Video. I mean, we could probably use that because, you know, we, we, rec- we kind of shoot this in one go. Um, and if I'm really honest with you, sometimes, you know, I might not say a certain word right <laughs> or come across. I think in the first one, I couldn't say like skeptical um, or something. I said sceptical or something like that. Um, but, you know, we kept it in there because it, it humanizes, you know, the content. But is there a risk that if you like make too many mistakes and take some out key words, then it doesn't really make sense when it comes together? Well, that's like anything, isn't it? When you write a story, if you take out too many of the key words, when writing a story, it's not going to make sense either. <laughs> so, so from that point of view, absolutely. What, what's quite magical about Descript, it's got some artificial intelligence in there and you've got to like record so many hours of content and it, and it starts to recognize your voice and you can actually type in words and it will recreate your voice which is quite a scary thought, really, because you could write a whole document out and they'll voice it out without you having to record anything if it was just voice only. Obviously, you can't do the video aspect of it, but <laughs> that's pretty... I'm not sure if my Yorkshire <laughs> accent is something they want to uh, automate. I mean, I know I've got a strong Yorkshire Leeds accent and I'm proud uh, more than anything else, but I know my voice is a lot deeper. I don't know if it's... To be honest, I don't know if it's suited to podcasting or video or speaking. I just know this is the voice I was born with and this is what I've got. So, fingers crossed, it's um, it's all good. But yeah, my voice in general, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see that automated. <laughs> um, the less I have to talk on something like this, probably the more time I save from a business perspective. But... Okay, I see a lot of companies make a lot of mistakes with video um, from a marketing perspective, social media perspective. Um, What mistakes do you see that companies make and what should those businesses try to avoid? Yeah, great question. So the mistakes that I see quite regularly, a lot of businesses make is... um, when planning the, the strategy and then delivering a campaign, 
there isn't a joint of conversation between all parties. There's typically client, agency, and video company. And what tends to happen is the client says, we need a campaign, we've got an event, let's put a landing page together, drive traffic to the um, landing page, or let's put a video on there. We've got some video from um, a previous event, or we can get somebody in to make a short promo and put it on the landing page. So agency goes away, puts the landing page, looks nice. They independently speak to a video guy and, and they make a video and then, you know, just like a bit of a jigsaw, they put it in and, and yeah, technically all fits and works. But when they come to the results and they see the results and they think, well, well, we got 20,000 people that hit the landing page because we can see the stats, but um, we didn't get that many conversions. And, and then they suddenly think, well, out of the design and the, the build of the landing page and the cost of the video, well, the video was the most expensive. Oh, we're not going to do a video again. But they don't really understand what were the dynamics or what were the challenges or the issues that created the failure of the success. You know, how, how, what, what were they thinking that, well, what did success look like for them in the beginning part? And, and really, how could video play a more integral uh, role? And then how are they supposed to measure that properly? So, for example, from our point of view, we would always say that the video department needs to be part of that conversation. What's the goal of the campaign? And make sure the structure of that video, the story of that video, the hook right at the beginning, the, the um, context straight after that, then the content, the main piece of the story is delivered in that structure, which it follows that kind of story um, structure. And then the call to action, what is that call to action? You've got to really spell it out in the video. If, you, if they're going to watch the video, that needs to be part of that structure. Then I talked about, in a previous episode with you, I talked about using technology, the right technology. So we're agency partners with an outfit called Wistia. And when we embed a Wistia embed onto a landing page, what that gives us is insights not only about what's happening with that video, granular data, but it also gives us data about what's happening on the landing page that it lives on. So now, if we can see 20,000 people have hit a landing page, and we can see, well, out of 20,000, only 2,000 have watched the whole video, yeah, so that's 10%. But we can all also see the granular analytics that, well, did people drop off or did they watch all of the video? And everyone that all 2,000 did watch all of the video, well, we can drive really quickly. Well, the video performed it with, with regards to whoever did watch it, watched it to its full entirety. Then we can start to think about, well, if only 2,000 out of the 20,000 people actually watched the video, was the landing page too busy? Was the design of the landing page uh, a bit weak. Was the video above the fold? Was it positioned in pole position that people are going to come here? That's your biggest asset. That's the most amount of investment you made for this page, for this campaign. Is it in pole position? So when people come into that landing page, they see the video first, they click play, and they consume that content. And, and what we see nine times out of ten, what happens is the video is a little thumbnail at the bottom, or it's hidden between content, or there's just a little play button, and it gets lost in the excitement. Or, or there's other things on that landing page where they're trying to sell or promote or, or say other messages it just gets a bit too convoluted so with, with regards to um, helping people understand how to use video um, as well as having a joint of plan you've got to have the right technology so you can see what happens afterwards next question really comes down to why we talked about this in the last episode is like you know we finished off in terms of like the future um, of what video looks like and you said like people should focus on like LinkedIn and TikTok but the question I want to ask in this one in terms of the when we talk about the importance of video is why is video so important across social media advertising? So, so video is super important on social media advertising and, and it's, it's once again at home on television at the cinema we just get engrossed in trailers in, in content in films in, in news and when you can use social channels in the same manner, you can push your own content out and make it just as interesting, just as engaging as, as some of them programs that you see. So from that point of view, as a brand, as a business, whether it's your personal brand you're trying to build or a business brand, you want to put your best foot forwards. You want to communicate. You want to communicate what you have to offer. And you want to talk to your, your audience and build that community with regards to um, what problem do they have? What solution can you bring to the table? And video is the most powerful medium, really, to do that. You can tell a story um, and explain so many different analogies and create so many parallels in the, in the content of that. And, and the biggest thing about video is, you know, it's about visual storytelling. 